Well, good morning, Dave. Good day, good day. Good day everybody. Good day. Hope you all survived the storm last night. I had a few branches down in our backyard. It was a bit interesting. It was. Blackouts. Yeah. So I hope everybody's okay, and uh, you know, and that all of your things and your people are are uh, unharmed. But because um, we just love you all, and uh, you're our brothers and sisters, and and children of God. So um, so tell us, Dave. What are we going to talk about today on Theology Thursday? Well, I was going to kick off with a, with a scripture from Haggai, uh, chapter 2, where God uh, was talking about the temple. And he said, Who of you is left who saw the house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem like nothing? How does it look to you now? Wow. That's, that's an interesting question that, yeah. that God asked the prophet. Um, he went on to explain to Haggai that the temple would actually be rebuilt uh, in such a way that it would be spectacular to see its glory, mm. its splendour, uh, that God said would be far greater than, than the original. And, yeah. you know, we, we've had lockdowns and lock-ins and, and threats of, uh, of catching the virus, vaccines, threats of death from clotting from the vaccines. Yeah. Uh, so as we It's look, been a fascinating year. <laughs> it's been interesting. So, but you know what? It's, it's also, it's been a fascinating century, yeah. you know, and, uh, and you, you know, watch the ups and downs of the church. And I suppose the same as the Lord was saying to Haggai, you know, look, you know, there's the, the former glory of the temple and then the, you know, now how does it look to you? And there were seasons back then and church, we've just been through an incredible yeah. season in the church. Well, as we look, uh, at Australia in, in 2021, just look at life. Um, it's a pretty fair question. Mm. How's life looking for you? Mm. Um, do you see the glass half empty or half full? Are you a, always half full, Dave? Always half full. It's always half full. Well, I tell you what, I'm neither. Oh, um, was that a trick question? Well, no. It's just <laughs> a, I see the glass is full, always full, a half of water and half of air, but yes. it's always full. Um, you know, we, we're, never, we're never less sure. But as we look forward, I wonder what we see. I wonder how well we'll do in the second half of 21. Um, yeah. Will things ever get back to normal or is this the new normal? Yeah. Um, will we make better use of our time? Uh, by the end of the year, will we be looking back with, with joy or regret? Will we be looking at the future with anticipation mm. or dread? So, so what do you see? Do you I think... I think, you know, it's a great question to ask, you know, what do I see? I'm thinking um, that, you, as you said, change is the norm. Like, yep. with this, change has always been the norm. Um, look back over your life, um, or even over, as I said, the past century, and uh, change is the only consistent. Yep. Life is changing. The, the world is changing all the time, and we just have to keep in step with what God is doing in that change. But even with that change, some people see clouds, some see sunshine, mm. some see despair, and some see hope. You know, yeah, some um, see hurdles, and others see yeah, opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, behavioral scientists uh, tell us that we usually see things that we're actually prepared or preconditioned in our mind mm. to see. That is so true. Um, it's centered in a, a network. Uh, within our within our brain called the reticular activating system. Um, and everybody watching Theo Thursday today has a reticular activating system. If you didn't already know that, mark it down as something you learned from Theo yes. Thursday. Um, and, and this it should be system... called Psycho Thursday. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's a, uh, yeah, a little bit of psychology there for you. Um, the, the system works like this. Once, once something has really caught our attention, mm. Uh, and we've been prepared or preconditioned to see it, we will see it virtually everywhere we that go. That is so true. Uh, so I don't notice many Audis on the road, but yep. you probably I, I do. I see them. Yeah. I see them. Not as cool as mine, but I see them. <laughs> when I was buying a new car, I decided on a Skoda. Uh, Good car. Even though we hadn't noticed many on the road, some of our family members had one and were happy with it, so I decided to join them. And as soon as I did, all of a sudden, I saw skaters everywhere on the road. They were on TV and ads, and I'd never even noticed them before. It's kind of like if, you, um, if you're in the market to buy something, like, you know, oh, I think we need a, a new uh, television, and all of a sudden you'll never guess what, they've got them on special. Yeah. They've got them on special at Harvey Norman, at the good <laughs> anyway. guys, at, they're on special. They always were on special. You just never noticed yeah. it because your reticular activating system blocked it out and said, I don't need that information right now. 
And so I, I wondered if Skoda had suddenly upgraded their production, but no, they were always there. But yep, the moment I was prepared or preconditioned to see them, my reticular activating mm. system kicked in and suddenly I began to notice them and see them everywhere. Um, and this same thing happens in, in other areas of life. What we, we, what we see what we are prepared or preconditioned to see. If we're prepared to see doom and gloom ahead, that's what, you'll that's see. what we're going to see. On the other hand, um, we have prepared ourselves to see sunshine maybe and opportunities, mm. then that's exactly what we're going to, to see. That's where the old idiom comes from, every cloud has a silver the lining, silver lining. but there it. are some people that say uh, every silver lining has a cloud. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's it. So which way are you? Which way do you lean? You know. So if you see a barely surviving remnant church in your mind and theology, then that's what you'll see in the world. Mm. But if you see revival, if you see a living, relevant church, that's what you'll find around you. And, and this is a principle that applies to our personal life and so true. equally our corporate life together as a church. Psychologists tell us that if we see ourselves as successful, if we see ourselves as fit and healthy, chances are that's what we'll be. On the other hand, if we see ourselves as failures, if we see ourselves mm. as weak, chances are pretty good that that's the way we'll yeah. be. Yeah. So when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see a child of God filled with potential and hope and love and joy and peace who can hardly wait for the next day to begin because there's so many exciting things to do. What, what do you see? Do you remember the movie The Incredibles? I love that movie. <laughs> that was such a good movie. But there was a great line in it that I thought was pretty good anyway. Mrs. Incredible uh, was passing on some advice to her daughter uh, and she said, protect your identity. It's the most important thing that you have. Yes. And I say the same today. Remember who you are, a child of the King, the creator mm. and sustainer of the universe. Let, let's challenge you today to see yourself the way God sees you. Know your identity. Know who you are and never let the enemy yeah. sell you short. So when Absolutely. you come to a Sunday service, do you see a room full of people coming together, a little something that will keep them going until next week? Or do you see a group of people with the potential to make a difference in the lives of individuals in this region, in this nation, mm. and, and in the world at large? It's a great question. I, I, I love the way Kaz, uh, Kaz, my wife, puts it. She says, um, you know, if, if, if the pastor says, I sense that somebody today is going to get a word of knowledge or a prophetic word for the church, do you sit back and go, oh, I wonder who it is, and look around? Or do you go, oh, that could be me, ready, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. And it's how do you see yourself? Do you yep. see yourself as somebody who's engaged and is, is contributing and a part of this or somebody who's a spectator? Yep. You know, if it was a game of football, do you see yourself on the field or in the stands yep. watching? Um, and, and I think this is a really important thing as well. Do you see a world to be reached with mm. the message of Jesus Christ? That's an important question yeah. because we see the things that we are prepared to see. And, yeah. and what you see often is what you get. Yeah. So we believe that God wants to do great things through his people. And he waits for a willing church to answer the call and respond to the challenge. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm sure we can both say this, that I see the house filled with glory. I, I see the church as, as people of great potential touching their community with the message of mm. hope bringing hope and healing to the sick and as a result, introducing them to Jesus. And so the bottom line Absolutely. is that we are the overcoming children of the creator and sustainer of the mm. universe. Uh, the world is redeemable and the church is God's way to bring that redemption that Jesus made possible to the world around us. Absolutely. You know, my, one of my favourite verses, Dave, is uh, from 2 Corinthians 5, where um, you know we get the incredible privilege uh, where Paul reminds us, we are God's ambassadors. Absolutely. We're heaven's ambassadors. That's, that's, we're incredibly key to this whole thing. And if that's true, that I'm an ambassador and that what really counts is my identity, 
who I am in Christ, that the Spirit of God is in me, and He is the one that touches the world through me. You know, I have access to His world uh, by because I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, but He has access to my world because He's in me, outworking His way. If that's true, then it doesn't matter how old or young you are. You know, like like uh, Donnie says, Donnie Stain says, you know, young or old, shy or bold, you know, no matter who you are, it's the Spirit of God working through you. And if you see yourself as that guy or that girl, that you are on a mission for God, like the Blues Brothers, right? You know, we, you, we are his ambassadors yeah. and he is going to flow through you. It doesn't matter if you're 100 years old or if you're 20 years old. It doesn't matter if you're really cool and ride a motorbike or if you're really old and drive a Skoda. It doesn't matter <laughs> because it's the Spirit of God yeah. flowing through you. And, and so one of the important things, and, and this is really important, for, for us today. This is one of the things we, we really want to present to you. One of the important things we have to note about the church and our part in it is this. We need to be the church, yeah. not just do church. Mm. Um, people yeah. talk about going to church or what happened at church today, but these descriptions separate us and indeed the whole concept of Christianity from what the church is actually about. Now, the problem is we begin to identify the church or even Christianity as a whole as a, the sum total of what happened in an auditorium for two hours a week rather than on an identity issue of the individuals and the community of those who have gathered to worship. Um, and, and it would be okay if Christianity was just a religion or system of beliefs to which we subscribe. It would be okay just to to think of it as what we do in, inside the building. But mm. Christianity is simply not that. It's, no. it's not a system of, re of religious practices and beliefs. It's all about relationship. Yeah. It's about connecting our relationship with God, mm. connecting with him, and as a consequence, our relationship with each other as Christians. So coming to connect yeah. with them and in our relationship and the world at large, I love, I love the, you know, I've heard this many times as I'm, I'm sure you have, but the, even the shape of the cross reminds us of that, that we have a vertical relationship yep. and we have a horizontal yep. relationship, a vertical relationship with God and horizontal with each other. And they're both as important. Remember when Jesus said, um, you know, these two commands, when, when somebody said, what's the most important one? And he said, well, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself or love. It's like the first one. Love your neighbor with all your you know, strength yeah. and soul and mind and so on. So we, we're supposed to love each other and love God with passion. Jesus didn't actually say go into all the world and gather for two hours a week <laughs> in large rooms where you can hide from the world at large. Uh, instead, he sent those on the inside to help those on the outside sure. to come inside. In other words, to connect. Yeah with God. Um, now, don't get us wrong here. We're not saying meeting together to worship and receive instruction from the Word of God isn't an important no, part. That's of a great thing Christian. to do. Yeah. Um, because in fact, it's so important um, that, that Christians are given commandment to gather together and, mm. and to make such gatherings a clear priority. We are not to forsake, that is, allow other things to yeah. get in the way or prevent us from meeting together or assembling mm. together. I love those families, Dave, where, you know, the, the family all gather every week at grandma's place for a roast. Mm. You know, every Sunday afternoon, the whole family, you know, the, the grandchildren, yeah. Yeah. the parents and, and the uncles and aunties, everyone goes around to, to the grandparents' house for, uh, for a Sunday roast. And, uh, you know, it doesn't happen in every family. It used to. It used to yeah, happen all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it was a family thing. The, the family get together, the family roast every, day, every week. And the way, that's the way I look at the church. I think church yeah. Sunday morning is like the family roast yeah. where we, we all get together every week to share stories. And how was your week? How was your week? Yeah. You know, how's that thing going? And did you get that job? And did you get the whatever, you know, and, and uh, how did you go in your exam? And, you know, at, at school, whatever it might be. But that's the time we, we actually, you know, formally all get together. But it's not just that's not all yeah. that family is. Family is all week. We're family seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And it's the same with the church. You know, our identity 
as Christians is that we are family. Yeah, we're not supposed to um, insulate ourselves from the world. Instead, we're, we're to go out into the world as the church to make a difference and draw people to God. We're, we're not merely drawing people to a building or an organisation called the church. We are drawing them to God and as a result, their identity is being transformed and they become part of the church, part of the, the family of God and thus their connection with God creates connection with others mm. who, who share that same thing. Um, that's why it's great on, on uh, Sundays uh, to hear the testimonies, yeah. uh, to hear what people have been experiencing yeah. during the last week. It's, it's one of my favourite parts of our church. It's the church though. in action, isn't it? Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. And we do we do make sure nobody gets carried away and talks too long and waffles <laughs> on and on. But but it's so good to hear people's stories, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, we, um, we might agree that the church is people rather than a building, but we need to remember it's not just people in church services. It's both... Um, yeah. people gathered and scattered um, so I, I, I say let's let's make sure that we see the church yeah. not as a location where we do certain things instead let's be the church wherever we are yeah. this is our identity it's less about religion more about relationship the family of God right? yeah mm. and so when, when Christians get outside the walls of a building uh, and actively engage the world in the name of Jesus then the church starts being the church. And our worship inside those walls becomes much more meaningful, in fact. Um, our commission is to make more disciples. Yeah. But we won't start to really do that and, until we take the opportunities given to us to reach others. Um, and, and remember, once you start to take the opportunities... That reticular activating yes. system hits in. You'll become more aware of That's opportunities so and you'll see more and more of them every day. And our testimonies, man, we're, we're going to That's see exactly some, right. some, some really great stuff. Yeah. And, and so I, I can't wait for that day, Dave, when there's yeah. like, you know, 20 or 30 people and we go, come on, now you have to keep it at 15 seconds, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Just tell us what <laughs> happened, you know. Yeah. And oh, I prayed for somebody. Oh, I, I, I helped somebody. I, I had someone over for dinner. And, you know, you have all of these stories of, of people reaching out with the love and grace of God. Uh, and it, as you said, it all comes back to understanding who we are. We're the family of God with the most precious message of all. And that is that our Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, wants to be connected to you, yeah. his children. Whether you're a Christian or not, we're all his children. Well, we're all made by him and he wants connection with us. It, it comes back to that question of Haggai, doesn't it? How do you see it? Yeah. How do you see you? How do you see the church? Mm. Um, and, and I think that's a really important issue. Um, I think a lot of the church is insular. Yeah. Um, and, and we need to see ourselves as being far more than that mm. so that we can see the opportunities and grab them and, and actually serve God the way that he's asked us to. Yeah, yeah, I love that, um, you know, reaching out and being a witness and, and taking every opportunity to just help people connect, even in a small way. It may be as simple as just God bless you today or look, I'll pray for you, or would you like me to pray for you now? Or It could be something small like that. You know, I love that it's not just the evangelists. You know, back in the old days, you know, anyone that did that was seen as an, a, a weird person or it's extra special because they're an evangelist. Whereas that's not the way it is. Yes, evangelists are good at it usually, but we're all called to be the light of the world. We're all called to be the salt of the earth. We are all called to be his hands and feet. We are all called to be his ambassadors. So God bless you. And uh, and I'm so looking forward to Sunday and hearing a couple of testimonies yeah. of what you were able to get up to and did God use you as his ambassador this week? So um, I look forward to it. Have a great week weekend.